my keyboard switches are very tired and it's gotten pretty dirty and I've destroyed a few of them over the last like two years worth of usage. But because it's modular, we can always repair it. Good afternoon, morning, welcome to Turbo Tour to Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the four piece variety of Walkie Triple XL. And the GMMK Pro has been on Eve Tech now for over two years, actually, as it kind of works out. Um, and there's still a bit of confusion as to how it actually comes together because I think some people are buying the bare bones and thinking that it comes with switches and with keycaps inherently, which it doesn't. It's literally just the base plate of one and a half kilograms worth of milled aluminium. It is very, very sturdy uh, base platform to work off of. You could double up as a home security option. I'm um, hashtag just saying. Uh, blunt force trauma would be real, but that's not obviously its primary role. Its primary role is to be a gaming keyboard um, that's fully programmable as well, 75% layout, and it's got uh, all the fantastic full aluminium volume knob, which you can even interchange on this. The idea is to make it the customized experience that suits you. So for instance, me, I like red linear switches. So there's KL Reds to facilitate that. And as I say, this key set has gone through the mill with me. <laughs> so it was already in need of replacement. So I've got a full replacement of glorious keycaps and all of these components are purchasable off the eTech store. But if we're going to be doing some work on a keyboard, we're going to need to change up the camera angle. All right, let's, so let's start off as per usual with the contents of each package. So inside of the bare bone kit for the GMMK Pro, you're going to get two pullers. The metal one is for pulling your switches and the plastic one is for pulling keycaps. It's as easy as that for the keycaps. The switches are a little bit more difficult. Um, you do have to get these little prongs underneath the side of each of them over there in order to like you got to go underneath the switch from either side like this and then almost like pliers and these are quite firm oh my giddy on um and then you'll be able if you go over the top and at the bottom there are uh, better areas over there for you to stick this in to pull it out it is quite a lot more difficult as you can see compared to the switches and so you've just got a flat deck behind that which we're gonna get rid of all my dog hair and uh, bits and crumbs and stuff from me <laughs> from eating across uh, uh, in and around and yeah i live with this thing and it's my daily driver the keys on this are getting quite shiny and if you notice the three over there if i just show that out to camera is actually uh, well, the S is actually a three because I destroyed all the other keys um, over time, which is just a causality of being a bit of a, a bit of an ape. So, <laughs> yeah, what you need is a pack of switches like this, which is now pictured on your screen. You can get them in 120s, 36s. They come in uh, various packs and types. And on the back, it gives you all of the compatible glorious ones. But any of the normal uh, Cherry MX sort of two pole switches. These are the most common and um, will be compatible with this. But these these are basically the the most common key switch type uh, that you're going to find. Just make sure it is in this format. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to interface with the keyboard. And then on this particular uh, build, we have bottom facing LEDs, which tend to have a little bit of a better shine through than the north facing ones. Sometimes those do run into uh, issues with certain keycap types. Then, like I said, you're going to need a box of keycaps as well, so that obviously you can put those on top of the switches. But as far as kind of using it goes, when you put these in, it's very, very straightforward. You just line it up with the two pin locations over there, and then you simply push it into the keyboard like that. And then the switch is installed and ready to go. These are pre-lubricated as well, so you won't have to open up each switch and lubricate them, which does give them very nice, thocky feel. But for now, I'm going to have to strip this whole sucker because, as I say, we're doing a keycap replacement and I'm going to be cleaning the deck and stuff of the keyboard.
Alrighty, and then in a couple of minutes, we have all of the keys removed. And as you can see, this is all mightily full of dog hair and other rubbish that <laughs> gets in between the keyboard. But this is the big plus about a modular type design like this is I can quite quickly uh, get the, obviously in there um, in just a few minutes. I haven't cleaned this out for a year. This is just a year's worth of usage. Having dogs and pets, guys, if you've got dogs and cats and stuff, it is going to get absolutely clogged inside of here with that. Luckily, with these switches, they don't really have uh, too much uh, space for things to enter into them. Every so often they do, uh, and then I just replace them, like I say, on the fly. So if I just grab the switch puller again, uh, I'll just show you quickly on one of these, like W, -A, this should be W over here, which is something that I use quite often. It's just easy to remove like that. And even then, this thing is full of hair and, and dust and stuff around the edges over there. So if you do want to do a deep clean, you are going to need to remove each one. But that gives you an idea of the board as you would receive it. Let me go and give it a quick brush off with a good old paintbrush. It's probably the best way to get in there and clean this without damaging it too much. Because um, you don't want to use anything with like hard bristles and, and such, because you're going to scrap, you, you're going to scratch the back plates over there and then it's just going to, the start to wear out and not it's kind of not a deal just use a paintbrush is the deal deal all right and then we have a completely clean deck i did get, grab a microfiber cloth just to go oh, give it a once over I gave it once with a damp microfiber just to clean all of these kinds of surfaces and then polish with uh just a you can buy these at like a hardware store local store, pick and pay spa even they should have over there for you and then um you just want to kind of grab a, a soft bristle paintbrush, just like this one over here. Okay, brand new and make sure that it hasn't been used for paint or turps or any other potentially harmful chemicals that might then ruin your keyboard. That would be very, very sad. But to remove and replace key uh, switches on this, not that I honestly have to do it very often because they are quite reliable. That's the big plus of mechanical. It is easy as just putting, I uh, just do the over and under type style like this and uh, make sure that the plier portion is underneath the switch like that and just give it a good pull. And that's as difficult as it is to remove a switch. And then when you put it back in, just be careful that you don't rock as you do it. You don't want it to go like in at the bottom and then at the top because that's when the pins actually will bend on this sucker. You want to just try and get it as dead on as possible so it almost is in like that and then it just sits. Simple, simple as that. It'll almost just like go in by itself in a way you'll see it just kind of like as you push it down it just kind of like sits in correctly that one i didn't do correctly and you can see the example over there of it bending pins if you bend these all the way flat they tend to not recover i do have a couple of ones that um I did that too in my box over here that didn't quite make it, um, but there's plenty of spares because this is a 75% layout. I've still got a ton of spares over here. These are all brand new, never been used. And these are ones that I ended up either damaging or replacing over here. Um, and it's only a handful of switches, um, really. Some of these are still brand new. They're still perfect. Um, and let me see if I can't grab one that I know, like this one over here, I had a really bad pin bend over there. So that sucker, the pin bent all the way back on itself over there. And that's basically non usable. You can straighten them. They do sometimes work, but yeah, it's better if you just have a brand new one and then you make sure that it's in the center and it'll just pop in. Like if you've done it correctly, if you, you'll feel as you do it, as you do your first feel, you'll be like, uh, okay. Like it just kind of sits down like pretty straight like that. Like some of them just go in like immediately. It's actually way easier to put them in than to take them out. Then we go. There we've got all of our switches now ready to go for new keycaps. When you get your keycap, let me just move this, this set out the way. They do include this cable as well, by the way, for the keyboard. That comes part of the keyboard kit. There are a couple other little bits and pieces which I'll show you. But then when you get your new uh, set of switches, it'll come, like if you get the glorious one, it'll obviously come in a package exactly the same as this. Um, and if I just open up 
over here, you'll see that the switches are laid out. There's multiple layers for them because it's for all of their keyboard designs. It's for their full size, their 60% and their 75% is all included. You get 114 keys. So even if you've got a full 104 key layout, there's actually spares because they mold keys specifically for the GMMK Pro. And as you can see, the GMMK Two is what these will be compatible with. So obviously that's good for us because we're on a GMMK Pro, which um, does help when the keys are compatible with what you're trying to use them with. So inside of the, this is what you'll be greeted with inside of the packaging for the actual keycaps themselves. There's a, a nice little about us, a little job over here and an ascended sticker, but obviously uh, that's not the highlight. The highlight is this, is the way that they've got these things packed out over here for you. And like there's multiples, like I said, of some keys. Um, so obviously we won't be using the numpads, but there's different arrow key sets and stuff. There's different shift and control key sets. They do also come with their own keycap puller. So you get a spare even of that in each of the packaging packages, which is kind of nice, but it does take a little bit of figuring out. Some of them um, are obviously wrong when you put them in. It's easier to start off with like the F, the escape and the F keys, because those are always consistent regardless of the keyboard. So generally I would say start there and then work backwards down the, um, down obviously the keycap sets. And then I'll show you a keyboard testing software as well. So you can see that your switches then are functioning as you'd expect. And just like that, we have now some absolutely stunning forest keycaps. I very much like this green sort of fade that's going on. The box does help a bunch because it's got the actual layout on there for the most part, especially for the GMMK Pro. That's what it's actually showing. These ones you can actually change depending on what you want to program onto the keyboard, which is also kind of nice. But now we are basically ready to test. And a lot of them, like for instance, the alt function and control that's sitting on this side over here, this one was physically just too wide and it was too low. This is obviously made for one of the full size keyboards. So it was very obvious when I tried to put it in that there wasn't quite the right setup. And based on the way that it's fading as well, it kind of helped me out to figure out which part was going to go in where. But that's how easy it is to build a GMMK Pro. And those are the three core components that you're going to need. So back to the studio. Man, doesn't this thing just look fantastic with this keycap set? There's also, you know, light beams on the side and obviously backlighting that I'm kind of not sort of using, not really using anymore. Um, I touched up anyway, but yeah. The, the keycaps like are different heights for the different layouts. That's why there's so many extras is because for like the full layout, they've got different keycaps. And then for the 60%, there's also different keycaps. It's kind of a one size fits all with all the different variances, but the color coding really helps with that, um, especially on this forest type of setup. They're much better quality than they were the previous gen. Like I said, a lot of these, they started to actually splinter where the, where the keycap meets the uh, actual switch over there. Um, but any Cherry MX type of uh, connector will 
work that they're all working off the that cherry sort of base point um i would suggest getting a big box of switches don't buy what you need buy a couple of spares because you probably will make a mistake i do as well sometimes when i put them in that happens but a nice little thing that they include with the gmmk pro is things like this what this is is strips of rubber and these are little gasket strips so that you can get the topping feel that you want so you get the talk this keyboard does have particularly nice stock. Now, the Jimmy MK Pro, after using it for two years, some of the feedback that I'll give you on this, like, are very reliable. As far as the switches go, I haven't had to replace just about any that I hadn't damaged. I think I've replaced one that I hadn't actually made a mistake with. So that's a, a hit rate of 1% failure, less than 1% failure in two years, which is great. The old uh, pudding keycaps were a little bit soft and they were tending towards a bit of shine on them as well. They're not um, as robust. The new set is way more robust. Some of the hearts of stuff is a little bit weird. I think the alt that I've got over here is wrong. There must be a different set over here for control alt and, and, and windows key because they are a little bit lower. Just at the end of it, just kind of looking at it objectively. Everything else lies up really nice and especially when you're on the other side of the keyboard it's sort of got like a it starts off like high and has like a little was like swash in the middle like that almost like a half pop you could almost boogie with your tech deck on the keyboard over here but all jokes aside it's been pretty reliable this frame is going to be with me until the end of days if the control board itself does go faulty i can just get another 75 percent layout and put it in here you can get replacement gaskets if you want different feels and different types as well you can get like acrylic if you prefer a softer one the default one that it comes with does have a pretty hard bottom out feel to it it is quite firm and th there's no such thing as flex in this i mean <coughs> I can't okay and I'm not the smallest person on planet earth so yeah it, but let's just say it's robust this thing is sturdy it's going to last you a long time the good thing about using their included stuff or their stuff underneath the glorious umbrella is that you're going to have a reliability and a compatibility that's always going to be one for one because they build and test obviously with their own stuff and so it's probably gonna come together just a little bit better. Like for instance, the alt function and control on this side are very size specific. They have to be a bit smaller than the other keycaps for them to fit nicely on the keyboard. So it might limit you, just double check if you are gonna get a different keycap set outside of the glorious range, that it is compatible with the GMMK Pro. I'm, I'm sure a lot of places will list that. Switches though, you can basically do whatever you wanna do. If you prefer a clicky blue because you like to annoy people, then you can do that. Overall, over like I said, over a two-year kind of period, it is really nice to have a premium keyboard that I don't have to go spend like two grand on a new keyboard because my keycaps fail. 700 bucks, grab a new set of keycaps, and you're back on the road for another two years. And so over its like lifetime like that, every sort of two years, it starts kind of paying back. Uh, and that's where we get the old Afrikaans adage of goedkoop is dierkoop. Sometimes it is better to save up and get a proper setup like this that will then see you into the future. Anywho, this is all I've got for you on what it's like to own and to buy a GMMK Pro setup. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.